Hi, Sarah Lacey backstage at Disrupt with Travis Kalanak, or as I like to call him, Kona T-Bone. Ooh, old school. <laughs> it's at Travis K now. Good story on that, on Kona T-Bone. I still have it. You still have it? It's yeah. waiting in the wings? I have Sarah Lacey, even though I still use Sarah Kuda. See, I didn't sell out like you. I kept the original Twitter I net kept, name. I have the original. It's just for, it's for close friends and, <laughs> you know, more risque tweets. More, more risque to go with the pink socks. Ooh, All there right. we go. So, you know, in the early days when you were Kona T-Bone, you were sort of this roving around angel and advisor. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I kind of thought you'd be this Sokka, you know, glad, glad kid, you know, oh. running around, not doing a lot. And here you find this hot company and you yeah. step in and you become CEO. What yeah. made you want to want to really go for it again? Right. And so, you know, just to, basically what happened was is that I, I had done 10 years of peer-to-peer -peer startups. Mm -hmm. I had been sued for a quarter trillion dollars. I had like gone through, you know, did another thing called Red Swoosh and um, try to, you know, go the other way and go on the light side of P2P. Um, went five years, was five years too early to market and then things started happening. Four of those years I didn't pay myself a salary. So when I finally did sell the Akamai, I needed to like chill the frick out. Paul Carr said worse. You can. I had to chill the fuck out. <laughs> and um, so I angel invested for a year and a half or so. Uh, was it hard? Were you just dying to get well, back no, in there? Well, or at, were first you tired? You were, at first I was, and then it was like, okay, I need to. I like to say, um, money will not make you happy, but it will pay for therapy. <laughs> and so I had to just go through some shit. My right? theory of working at TechCrunch right I, there. I, I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> and so actually, it was Gar Garrett and I started talking about. Uber like way back in 2008 at the web, we started talking about, we, we were throwing out ideas, uh -huh. all kinds of ideas, actually a lot of them sort of along the same line as far as brand, but he was doing some, he was talking about some transportation stuff. I was talking about um, sort of, uh, you know, other types of experiences and um, we just got this bad boy started. And when right. we started it, we're like, this is a limo company. Yeah. And we're like, you know, Garrett and I are looking at each other and we're like, you, takes want, limos. you want to start a limo company? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't, or sorry, do you want, we wanted a limo company in San Francisco. There's no way to get around. Right. But it was like, do you want to run a limo company? Yeah. Like, and I, I don't want to run a limo company. And so I incubated it, mm -hmm. built the team up. And after my recharge mode had happened and it became really clear to me that this was a product and tech company. Mm -hmm. It just was the right match to come in and run it full time, uh -huh. and so that's that's pretty much how it went. So, are out. you happy doing it again, or did Dude, you I get am, too old in the interim? No, and that's the thing that's interesting. Some entrepreneurs, and I, I was one of them. I'm, I was scared. I was scared. It's like an artist who thinks like at some point they're too old yeah. to do their art or to bring it. Yeah. And and like I'd look at like Woody Allen films, and I'd be like, he still got it. Right. And I'm like, yes, you can still do it. <laughs> and uh, Grandma Moses. You know, and I'm like, I, it was the same thing. And then when I when the passion took over, mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm better than I was. Yeah. Like I'm more intense, I'm more awesome. I think the difference is, is that in the last one, I was afraid of failure. Yeah. Now I'm not afraid anymore. And so now wow. I can so just, the opposite now I can just have fun. Now I can just have fun and go and kill it. And you're having fun, you're challenging everyone. Definitely. You're, I mean, I mean what, so there's so many things that I love about Uber yeah. Cab. Um, and you know, the first Without is the that- Without the cab. Yeah, Uber, sorry that I love about Uber the first <laughs> is that um, you're doing something user. in the real world. You're yeah. disrupting real world, which yeah. to me is the whole next wave of the web. I mean, yeah. it's like we've, I think all of the other things we've done up until now yeah. have been necessary in sort of laying the foundation, sure. but there's so many real world problems and taking on something like this is, is so ballsy. And yeah. you know, I think in addition to that, it's, there's a lot of real hardcore math and technology yeah. behind this company. Yeah. And that's something we have not been seeing in Silicon yeah. Valley. This whole wave of the web yeah. has been more about UI, yep. design, vision, features, right. not about the hardcore. Yeah. Sort of standing on the shoulders of giants sure. and building on what's been built. Sure. So tell us a little bit about, you know, for the geeks yeah. out there, what it takes to make yeah. this company work. Yeah, I know. I think that's a great question. And so the high level is that we sort of look at it as a mix of UI and experience with sort of hardcore math. And what that means when the rubber meets the road mm -hmm. is that it means efficiency with elegance on top. Mm -hmm. And that is the wow experience of Uber. And so where the technology comes in is that, you know, look, we could put a thousand cars in San Francisco mm -hmm. and very quickly go out of business. Mm -hmm. We need to actually predict what demand is going to be 
and then make sure there's the right number of cars <coughs> out there every mm -hmm. hour of the day. But you can't just say, okay, this is what the demand's gonna be, let me put out those cars. You actually have to position those cars. Mm -hmm. And so you're basically got a moving heat map of where we expect demand is gonna be. And then we have what we call anti-heat, which is where those cars are at that moment in time. And so the residue heat is underserved areas. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to dynamically respond to that kind of thing. So everything from the demand prediction side to supply matching to supply positioning, and then you've got spikes. Mm -hmm. like rain or shift change or things like this, dynamic pricing is part of, the, part of the equation as well. So there's just a ton of math which basically makes sure that riders get a car in five minutes. Mm -hmm. And making that elegant experience is very, very hard from a mathematical perspective. But once we do, once yeah. we have a huge network in a city and huge efficiencies and the, 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 right. the pickup times are low, the efficiency is high or the utilization is high, it's very hard for, for somebody else to come in and break that. Right. I have a reverse testimonial for anyone who still is not a believer in using our Uber cab. Okay. So, because most people say, oh, I got picked up, it was great, it was great, it was great. So, time I didn't use it. So, my husband and I are going to the airport to go to Nigeria. I'm sweating to hear we, how this is. Oh, Nigeria. No, okay. it's, it's time we didn't take it and we should have. Right. So, we, we get an Uber ah. cab to the airport and we're like, this is a great experience, about $20 more than we pay to get to the airport. So, we're like, well, this is good, but you know, we don't really love nice cars. We're like, was this that big of a deal? Yeah. So, on the way back, we're like, let's just grab a cab instead of calling. There's this line of cabs at the airport. This is a time we would never use Uber. There's cabs right here. Why would we call a cab? We get in. My Blackberry, my precious Blackberry, is like sitting in the pocket of my backpack. I throw it in the trunk, pull the bag out. Blackberry's gone. Second I step out, Jeff says, do you have your phone? I realize it's not there. The cab's pulling away. We write down the number, write down the license number, try to play him, call Yellow Cab, say, just left the house. Blackberry, we'll give him a huge ship. He comes back. Never got the phone. Yep. Never got the phone. No way to get in touch with him. That's right. I had to call Yellow Cab every day for a week and a half. Yeah, never nothing. got it. Never got it. Wouldn't have happened with Uber. No, we know the driver. We call him and he would come back, right? We know the driver. You saw the route that was taken. You know, drivers have star ratings. It's all sort of a centralized yeah. reputation system. There's no way that phone doesn't so get back to you. So it's accountability, not just accountability, not just convenience. Right. Was what we learned the hard way. So. Never again. We, I mean, we are the biggest die in the wool customers now. TechCrunch is going to have to give me a raise to afford that extra $20 for every cab ride. I love it. This is good. <laughs> so next city, are you going to tell us? Uh, well, we have four cities on the short list right mm -hmm. now that we're basically hiring in right now. So it's Seattle, it's uh, DC, Chicago, and Boston. Mm -hmm. And where we basically get a general manager for each city, similar to like maybe how a hotel has a general manager, mm -hmm. for instance. They have to run the operational business, but also grow the top line. Mm -hmm. And so wherever that general manager comes in first is gonna be our next city. We're spending a lot of time in Seattle right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a happy hour earlier this week. Um, rain is a big deal. I was gonna say, is deal. rain the biggest I think it rains why? there like 200 days a year. Yeah. And our virality, like as far as how this spreads and sort of word of mouth, yeah. and we're pure word of mouth. We're right. old school word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Our virality doubles when it's raining. Wow. So one of every three trips, we get another registered user, and registered user means yeah. they actually have a credit card on file. Mm -hmm. When it's raining, it's one in one and a half. Wow. So we get another registered user every one and a half trips that happens yeah. because people need to and get- And it'll be a bigger math challenge because yeah. of the intensity of the rain. All right, we've got to wrap. You've got to get to meetings. Rock Thank on. you so much for joining us, Travis. That was awesome. Always good to see you, Sarah.